Hey, thanks so much for taking the time to check out our program. I'm Tyler, a PGY3. I'm Molly, a PGY4. And I'm Macklin, a PGY2. We're here to tell you about what life is like as a radiation oncology resident at UW. We'll go into our daily lives, how rotations work here, and then talk a bit about life in Seattle outside of work. First, the part of the schedule that's consistent from resident to resident is our attending lead didactics in the mornings. Every Friday from 8 to 11.30 or so is protected time for clinical, physics, and radiobiology lectures along with a meeting with our program director. There will also often be didactics on other mornings at 7.30 throughout the week, with some mornings reserved for grand rounds or chart rounds. A nice feature of our physics course, other than it being led by Eric Ford, who literally wrote a book and curriculum tailored to the needs of radiation oncologists, is that we take it with the physics residents, who are extraordinarily helpful. Individual rotation structure varies between attendings, but the key is that we're not used as cheap labor, as our attendings are used to being completely uncovered for half the year. Therefore, any OTVs and follow-ups we see are for our own educational benefit and are opportunities for us to really see the long-term effects of treatment and build relationships with our patients. Everyone is very receptive and flexible to our needs, and the program is continuously tweaking things to make sure we get the best educational experience. We share our attendings' academic day once a week, with the possible exception of a few rotations where we're covering two attendings. Again, it's very important to note that on these rotations, we're covering two attendings for our educational benefit and not to provide grunt work. For example, Leah and Simon share the main CNS rotation, and this is because with all the administrative and research duties they have, we wouldn't see enough cases just following one of them. Another thing to note is that on each three-month rotation, we usually get 45 to 65 cases, which is a great balance between learning from cases without being too overwhelmed to study. We all get lots of time to do research both during our dedicated year and during our clinical rotations, but we won't be able to do any justice to that topic here, so we'll save it for another occasion. For about 21 weeks during our four years, we take inpatient call when we're pulled off our attending service and not expected to cover their clinic at all. These weeks vary by how busy they are, but they are never unmanageable and provide great interactions with the inpatient teams and exposure to complex palliative treatments. They also provide an opportunity to more formally work with dosimetrists and physicists and learn more in-depth about planning, safety, and QA. One of the great things about resident life here is the diversity of experiences. The daily life and workflow at SCCA and UW are similar enough that you don't feel like you're floundering to learn how things work, yet different enough that things stay fresh. The Proton Center and our collaboration with Seattle Children's means we never have to go elsewhere to get cases, and the VA gives our seniors a great opportunity to practice more independently. We each have a cubicle at the UW Mothership, and it's great to have a place to call your own while also being able to chat with your colleagues just a few steps away. Our administrative support here is great, starting with our wonderful program coordinator, Michelle. One thing in particular to point out is the great financial support we get from the program, which is well above and beyond what the general UW GME offers. If something will help with our education or day-to-day -day experience, the program will likely get it for us, whether it's a nice mouse for contouring, books, question bank, or fancy microphones and lighting for homebrewed residency life videos. In terms of what resident life is like outside of work, we have a ton of different interests. We come from all over the place, including five countries and close to a dozen states, and we've trained in every region of the country. Our current residents have sung at Carnegie Hall, played at the Lincoln Center, run dozens of marathons, celebrated Song Kran in Thailand, attended the Cambridge May Ball, lived in many countries, and had six kids during residency. The program never discourages us from doing the things we enjoy. Life in Seattle is great because we have all the benefits of a big city and the great outdoors at our disposal. We run along beautiful paths, bike on amazing trails, ski great peaks, hang out at beaches, have regular board game nights, cook and eat incredible food, and just generally spend quality time with each other and our families. 
In non-COVID times, there's even more to do with museums to explore and shows to see. As for where the current residents live, we're spread all over Seattle. Some of us with families live in more suburban areas, while others may live near the university, in more hipster areas like Capitol Hill, or in high-rises downtown. Seattle is also one of the most dog-friendly cities in the U.S., so pets are definitely welcome. Many of us have cars, but some don't, and it's an easy commute to our sites by walk, bike, or public transportation, depending on where you choose to live. Thanks for taking the time to check out our program. Please contact us if you have any questions at all. You can email our program coordinator, Michelle, and she will pass questions on to the appropriate person. If you interview with us, you also have lots of opportunities to ask us questions directly. Thanks again, and stay safe.